over time, I recognize that Jody purposely put herself on a pedestal, not just so you would see her as a god, but because she believed she was a god. It had good seeds. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Um, so as you can see by the title and thumbnail, this video is all about Paige Hanna. If you don't know who Paige Hanna is, her and her husband Johnny Hanna were Connections coaches with Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie. And um, I did a video, I can link it up here somewhere, I did a video on them about six months ago and uh, there's been an update. She's finally spoken out. She's the only person who is listed as a Connections member or coach who has spoken out. And it's been obviously crazy that no one's talked, but I do give her props for actually coming out and finally talking and being the first one. I mean, she did because <laughs> Kevin mentioned her name, but enough of the intro. Let's get into the juicy details of this video. I'm going to give my reaction to her video and I'm also going to share emails. Uh, I emailed Paige and she actually responded back to me. We had a pretty kind correspondence back and forth. And then I'm also going to get into a little bit of, let me grab it. <laughs> I'm also going to get into this. Yeah, look, Ruby and Jody. <laughs> wrote a book together. Uh, I bought this like, I don't know, maybe at least a month ago, maybe more. Um, and it's just like, honestly, you know, like people say word salad. <laughs> this is, this book is word salad, but because of the things that Paige mentions, I wanted to read a couple of things from here. So this is like really meaty type of uh, video today. So if that's what you like, stick around. I just want to give you guys a little bit of context first before playing this video is this YouTube channel under the rug by Paige. As you can see, she's the person on this video. It says that the account was created April 11th, 2024, which is the day that this was posted. But uh, according to Reddit, because this is how I knew she had under the rug on YouTube, according to Reddit, she had this before she had a podcast and then I think like Ruby was on it or something. I can put screenshots on the screen. She actually deleted it. So I took screen recordings to show the links that were shared in the eight passenger snark Reddit and it was actually deleted. So she wiped herself from YouTube and then re came on with the same name, which is kind of interesting to me that, I mean, I guess people would know her then because it came under that name, but yeah, I want to let you guys know that, um, she had this name before, deleted it, and then rejoined YouTube. Um, and I couldn't see like any stats on Social Blade when I was looking. And then I went to the Reddit to make sure whatever I was remembering was even correct, and, and it is. So, <laughs> sorry, finally, let's get into the video now. Hi, my name's Paige Hanna. Um, I'm married to Johnny Hanna. I have eight kids. I live in Utah. And uh, I am a former colleague to Jody Hildebrandt and former friend and business partner to Ruby Frankie. This video has been a long time coming um, for years. I've wanted to share my experience with connections and have not known how or when. Um, so a long time coming and she's saying she wants to, that it should have been, or sorry, she's been wanting to share it for years. I don't doubt that that's true. And I, uh, for me, the long time coming would more so refer to the last six months because everyone knew she was a coach and her name was being thrown around, you know? So uh, I'm not trying to just like hate on her, okay? This is not my intention in this video, just like a reaction. This is just my honest reaction to what she's saying. Yeah, I think I think this is gonna be received in poor taste because of that, unfortunately. Fortunately, however you wanna view it, but yeah, that's just my thoughts. And no, it's time. I, I definitely know that my name, my husband's name has been put on the radar through Kevin Frankie. Not just Kevin Frankie, but I shared my video and I definitely know YouTuber Headlines did a video because I did talk about, oh, like in my video, I was like YouTuber Headlines, blah, blah, blah. So there was only two of us who shared videos. So I'm guessing because it was like more widespread because it was from a police interview and you know, those videos got hundreds of thousands of views across multiple channels. So I can see why she spoke out now because it's like they're kind of put in like the corner now, like they they have to talk, right? I shouldn't say have to, but uh, it's like, this is the time if you weren't going to talk before. Um, and some misconceptions he's had. And would like the opportunity to share my experience um, in its entirety um, to offer a bridge to a lot of um, pieces that are that are not connecting. I want to explain first that uh, in no way will the videos I put out um, be monetized. I am not 
seeking um, any gain off of the pain of the Frankie children. I only that was like one of the driving forces to me wanting to make this video because like I've referenced the eight passenger snark Reddit, I went there to see what they had to say about it. And people are like showing screenshot proofs that this video is not monetized, but I need to give you guys a little bit of a lesson if you don't know. I think only people who want to be creators or are creators know this. When I was looking at her channel, I didn't take a screenshot at the time, but when I first did, it had like 460 subscribers. And then at the time of recording this, she has like 680 subscribers and she has one video up, right? Um, if I do the math on the calculation, I can put it on the screen later. I just can't risk losing my recordings here. But how many watch time hours she would have at the time of me editing this. So I'll, I'll put that on the screen somewhere. How it works with YouTube monetization is in order to be monetized, have ads on your videos. And, and I know in the pa eight passenger snark, they said, oh, can't YouTube throw ads on whatever? And I don't think that's true. I don't think YouTube puts ads on channels that aren't monetized. But when she, this is like, just, this is like my only negative with her whole video really is that it's like this, I don't know, kind of like, a savior thing to try to be like, I'm not making money off of this. What she should have said was my channel's not monetized. So I'm not making money from this. Instead, she made it sound like she turned off monetization for it. So with YouTube, in order to be monetized, to make any sort of money, you have to like, as in from ads from YouTube, you have to have 1000 subscribers and 4000 watch hours. It is actually really hard to get that 4000 watch hours unless you have a viral video, which is why I think from this video, actually based on the views, I think she is gonna be monetized from this video. Uh, she'd, she'd have to turn on monetization. So if she doesn't turn it on, then I think that's awesome. And she's going by what she said here. There is like a second tier of getting monetized on YouTube, which just happened in like 2024 this year, where if you have 500 subscribers and four, I believe it's still 4,000, no, 3,000 watch hours, then you can, you're eligible for like super chat. So when someone has a live and then you give it like a super chat, you know, where it shows up on screen and it says the dollar amount or a super thanks where in just a regular posted video, like the style that I do, if you've seen um, like people with a dollar amount and they say like some sort of message of like appreciation, typically that is called a super thanks. So uh, when you have 500 subscribers and 3000 watch hours, you're eligible for that. So she can turn that on, but you have to turn that feature on, on your channel. So she is not monetized. She is not able to be monetized yet. Um, she maybe have got, maybe by now she would have received an email that she can apply for that like lower tier of monetization, but until she reaches a thousand subscribers, which she probably will with this video, honestly, because her video is just climbing in views, obviously, she will be able to be eligible for monetization. But this is like, <laughs> this is a pretty big deal to me. She's not eligible for monetization. So don't be fooled. She can't monetize this video, okay? Seek to provide some understanding that hopefully in the future um, might aid them in some way um, or aid people who will help them in understanding this side of the narrative. The comments below will be shut off as well as like and dislike. Um, I've already been accused of being the source of all of this pain that's been caused because I initially was the introduction um, of connections to Ruby. Um, there is an email address posted below if you have sincere comments or questions. Uh, you can email that address. Those will be screened before getting to me. So um, save your energy uh, and posting negative because I won't read them, but um, I, I genuine, genuinely will help answer anything that people are, are wondering. Um, Okay, so that is true. Like I shared in my intro-ish or whatever, I, whenever I said that, um, I did email her and she did email, email me back. So um, I, th I think it's really great she did. It is true. So she's not just saying that she is going through her emails or having someone go through them and then send them to her. And then she is responding if she wants to. So that is something important to know. And I am on the side of don't send emails just to be like, hey, you CA your children, blah, blah, blah. Because like, just because they're involved in connections doesn't mean they they did that, you know, it's like people all hate MLMs, which I understand that. And I shared in videos before that I have done an MLM. And so when I was in them, I had people tell me I was in a cult, blah, blah, blah. But I like believed it all. So I didn't think I was in a cult, but there are good people within these things. You know, it's not everyone is corrupt. So I think that's really important to know about Paige is that 
I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying like, there's no proof of that. So everyone has to stop like lumping them together, especially because she wasn't part of those like seances that Pam, Ruby and Jody did. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them in the same category. Um, but that's just my opinion. You're entitled to think what you believe. Obviously, I'm not trying to sway you to think any sort of way, but that's just what I think. Oh, this isn't going to be easy. This isn't something that I uh, take any joy in sharing. It's been really difficult the last six months understanding what uh, those Frankie children have been through. Especially with the knowledge that um, I tried to warn Ruby and she- I wonder how, what, not what she Not only didn't listen, but told me um, that I was lying. And it has been very painful uh, understanding that, that she was already that controlled um, by Jody. In order for you to understand um, the later things that took place, uh, Jody did in fact stay at my home for six weeks. I need to uh, start at the beginning with where I was introduced to connections and some of the very basic teachings that I received because those teachings Okay, I was going to say something and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to say that yet. So it's just about the emails. Things that were good at the beginning were what I was able to utilize and my husband to recognize um, how sick she was. Uh, I also have the understanding that even when I was taking um, a class from her, which is initially how I met her, um, she had already been to Jesse Hildebrand. So in the past, I may have said that, oh, she became a dark person. I recognize she was a dark person from the beginning and can see how it was masked and how she utilized good things to then bring in this control that she wielded. That's actually something like a tactic that MLMs do, which is what I was saying before, is that they have like, there's like a baseline of really good principles, but then they manipulate them into something really toxic and wrong. And then I believe that's what happened with connections here. I do think there's probably other people in connections that aren't great, you know, but there's no, I don't know. I feel like there's no proof to know how far it's gone with other people. We, we won't know. I don't think we'll ever know. But I, I do think it's more of like, that MLM culture, you know, the baseline is good, but then um, like the leaders themselves are like, some of them can go really far, you know, into into twisting it. Uh, and in 2017, I had, um, I had just given birth to my sixth child who was a girl. I had had five boys previously and this girl, um, while I was so excited to have this girl, I was terrified um, of being a mother to a daughter. And the, the thing that she says there, I really <laughs> empathize with because I did get a, like a few hate comments on this video, but I did a video about that. I didn't want to have a daughter because um, I, for me, have had a really tumultuous and bad relationship with my own mother, like my whole entire life, you know, um, and didn't feel that love that you would believe a mother would have for their children, you know? So hearing her say this, I completely 100% empathize with her. And, um, yeah, I just, I know, I know why she sought out like help because like for me, I went and saw my therapist and I got help like, but she obviously went in the hands of the wrong individual, but, um, I, I definitely see where she's coming from just was finally um, at a point where I really wanted to understand myself better to be a better parent. I had a nanny, a dear friend who um, had been helping me for years and had seen Jody as a therapist for a period of her life, a short period, and had some of the, some forms and worksheets from her time um, in therapy and brought them to me and, and they were good. They were very basic, um, teachings of how to know if you've gone into drama and how to get yourself out of it, um, how to recognize your motive and uh, not go into shame or 
just just really basic. I don't know that they were they were Jody's teachings, <laughs> probably stolen from somebody. <laughs> um, but that put Jody on the radar. So then a year later, when I heard she was doing a parenting class, I thought it was a good idea. Um, this parenting class was a six week or eight week course uh, taught once a week. Which is like ironic because I've done digging and it didn't look like Jody had custody of her children. So, <laughs> I mean, it, this is why it's really important to vet who you get help from, you know, like look into the background of your therapist because if they are preaching um, parenting type of content, are they a good parent? Just like influencers, you know, they do motherhood and lifestyle content, but a lot of times they're just like doing that for the camera and they're not necessarily present in their kids' lives, you know, so something to consider when you are seeking out help is to vet those individuals. For two hours, um, there were, there were a few couples in there where there were some different men and women and it was, um, a typical class. We came in, she had a presentation, she would teach some, some principles and we'd ask questions and then we'd be on our way. As I sat in the class, there were so many things that were good. And I know nobody wants to be educated in connections. Um, a connections went off for me three years ago and I haven't touched it. I haven't, I didn't even sit in the rubble. I wanted out. I eradicated the vocabulary. The, um, I just wiped the slate and, and went the other direction. And but the thing I wonder about that is Kevin had mentioned in his interview, it doesn't mean what he said was true, but that um, they were leaving for like another cult leader. So I didn't ask Paige that question, but because I don't really know, it's not really my business, honestly. I just more care about like the connections type stuff. But um, she says she ran the other direction. So maybe it was like a different lifestyle coach or therapist. I don't know. But that's another thing to remember from Kevin's interview. For the purpose of you understanding what will then take place. There's some principles I want you to understand. Um, the very, very basic one was there were, there was an arrow coming down, pointing this way and an arrow coming down, pointing this way. And it was peace. Um, peace feels like serenity and calm and confident and at rest. And, you know, this state that everybody would like to be in. You feel enough. You feel worthy. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> like she said, everybody. And um, and then on this side was pain. And in in a state of pain, you feel insecure, unworthy, unloved, um, anxious, depressed, stressed. And and the whole process was that if you can look at your thoughts you can trace when you moved from that place of, sorry, from that place of peace over into a place of um, pain. Ultimately, she shifted that into when you can see, when you can trace your thoughts and your feelings, then you will know if you are in truth or if you've moved into a place <laughs> of distortion. And yes, I want to gag every time I use those two words because she um, completely destroyed the word truth and distortion makes me want to vomit. Okay, so I think that is a really good time to take a break and go into this book, okay? So if you want to watch, I should have said at the beginning, but if you want to watch Paige's uh, thing, there's a screenshot somewhere. I don't know if I can link things. Like I'm really bad at being able to link things in my description box without it getting flagged. Um, but just go to her channel, watch the whole thing uninterrupted. But again, this is a commentary channel, so I'm going to pause when I want to, but this is the book. I got it. And I want to go through some of the things because this is the only time she mentions the teachings. And so I want to go through what Ruby and Jody were teaching. And I believe it's probably changed because it does say Ruby and Jody on it. And I'm sure the language maybe has changed a little bit, but I mean, probably not. It's probably the same crap that Paige and Johnny had learned about parenting. So let's get into that now. Okay. So the part of the book I did <laughs> bookmark it. I was originally going to do a video going through this entire book, but like I said earlier, is that it's just like a bunch of word salad. It's just, <laughs> it's really annoying. And this is quite lengthy. 
Okay, it's quite lengthy, but I do feel it's important to read because it really gives a lot of insight into the crap that RF and EF and and if the other children were too treated, I can't use the words, but you know, CA'd by Ruby and Jody. It really gives the perspective of their like messed up mind. Okay, okay. So this heading of this part says distorted parenting statements and beliefs. I'm going to actually first I'll read the list and then I'm going to read these blurbs and kind of going backwards and how the book was written. But they share, they share, okay, distorted parenting beliefs. It's, it, like I said, it's quite lengthy, but I feel like it's really important to share. So this is a list that Ruby and Jody made on, it says, the following statements are very familiar and have been repeated in nearly every household. You may read these and become reactionary slash defensive. We invite you to stay curious and be willing to hear the deception in each of these statements and beliefs. So I think that I like Jody uses a lot of words <laughs> wrong. So just be aware of that. I'm reading it as it is written here. Okay. So these are the statements. I'll pause in between each one so that you know, uh, like what is what, um, if I can, I'll take a picture of the book and put it on the screen so that you could see the list as I'm saying, cause it's probably boring just to watch me re read it out. Okay. So boys will be boys. Girls are harder to raise. They will grow out of it. This is just a phase. Pretty girls have long hair, which that one's interesting to me because they had shaved EF's, well, Ruby had shaved EF's head as a form of punishment, right? And that's why the police officers thought that she was a boy. Um, so, and I'm not, I, I think there's a lot of women who are very beautiful without hair. I would not be one of them, <laughs> but there's a lot of women who are very beautiful without hair, but it's interesting that that was one of the statements here. Um, okay, continuing on just enjoy them while they're young. Like, why wouldn't you <laughs> enjoy them while they're young? You know, they grow so fast. You know, they say the days are long, but the years are short. Uh, childhood is meant to be magical. I think it should be. I think it should be magical. <laughs> it's as in lying cute when they are little. I guess they're referring to like, whenever they lie, it's cute when they're little. I don't know. They just like put the word lying in, even though the phrase is it's cute when they're little sometimes like, I don't know. Um, what you, what you did doesn't matter. Tomorrow is a new day. Don't be so hard on him. He's only dot, 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 which I think is true. Don't be like whatever their age is. If they're like at the cognitive understanding, I'm going to get into that too. Some like TikToks I found, which help explain <laughs> better than I could from actual prof professionals. She doesn't know what she's saying. He can't do dishes. His stomach hurts, which is RF in particular was the one treated the, the worst. I'm not trying to minimize EF's injuries because it was equally as wrong and horrible, but we know that RF was treated worse. So that statement of, sorry, I can really hear them out of breath right now. This is how I am. I'm, I'm sorry if it's distracting. Uh, I don't know if it has to do with, I feel like I've always sounded out of breath because I went back to my YouTube videos in the beginning. I very much sounded out of breath and I hadn't had children yet then, but I did have double pneumonia as a baby. So I wonder if I always sounded like this but it's gotten worse since I had children. I feel like everything that moved <laughs> isn't back in the right spot because I had like massive babies, you know? So sorry, that's distracting. I'm distracted by it myself. Oh yeah, so the part about the dishes, like it's like, why would you want your child washing dishes or like doing any household activity or anything if they're in pain? This again, this is why it's really important to read this list because it really shows their messed up minds. Um, this is very uncharacteristic of her. She never, she's never like this. He's never talked like this before. This came out of nowhere. He is learning. He's doing his best. It was a mistake. He didn't mean it. Just look for the good in her. What's wrong with that? The good always outweighs the bad. Why is it <laughs> bad to think like that? You can't hold her accountable. She doesn't feel well. Again, treating children poorly when they don't feel good. Uh, bribery gets the job done. Children aren't capable of lying. And I'm going to get into that with the brain development in a little bit here. You think it's bad now, just wait till they're in their teens, which is true in a way. Like I've heard that every stage of parenting has its hardships. And, uh, I mean, in the early years, like the ones I'm in right now, they're more of like the exhaustion, dealing with tantrums, that sort of thing, you know, don't hold him accountable. He was just trying to help. What? Don't punish children or they will punish you back. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't a choice. It was just a simple mistake. You made me do that. It's not her fault. She's hormonal. 
that's true to an extent, okay? I know, and everyone who <laughs> menstruates will know, <laughs> it's true. Our hormones do affect certain things, and then some of us have hormone imbalances, and that can affect things. It doesn't mean that what we're feeling is incorrect, but it is true. Uh, just be positive. The negative will disappear. That's like a little gray area to me because I do believe in thinking positively and then, you know, good things will come to you. So um, stay calm and pretend you don't notice. You have to walk on eggshells with her. So they really like sandwich things that are obviously, you know, stay calm, pretend you don't notice. I don't think pretending you don't notice something is good to do, but all the ones that they're mentioning that are actually like good things, not good for them to mention as in it's good that people believe that, but they believe that type of thinking is distorted. They sandwich things in that make sense that are distorted into things that are very much not. So that, that I think this is how people are able to be like easily brainwashed by them because when it's like hidden in things, you think, oh, okay, well, they all must, you know, you, uh, leave from the heart. Don't rock the boat. I've never heard that. <laughs> I scratch your back. You scratch mine. See, that's like a phrase we've all heard before. So it's like sandwiched in. Um, he's fine. He is in the terrible twos. There's like actual scientific research that shows that, <laughs> that, shows that, that is true. Um, sorry if my, I don't know if I'm blurry at all. Um, forget about it. Let's just start over. He's a bad apple, which is interesting that they think that that is distorted thinking because they treated e R RF like that, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> when I read these last night, I was like, what? Why would you even mention this? It's so freaking weird. Okay. We're only halfway done the list. Don't worry. That joke will go over his head. I don't believe in joking at children's expense. So that, you know, whatever. I was a kid once too. I get it. They didn't mean anything by it. 50 years from now, no one will remember. Let them be little. Come on, let children be little. I totally think that that's a good thing to let them be little. But yet to Ruby and Jody, that's distorted thinking. Um, they will learn when they're older. I screwed up as a child and I turned out. That phrase is like, if you've ever been on TikTok, you'll see like millennials talking about like Gen X or their boomer parents saying like, because like millennials are parenting different. Um, and so then the, you hear that like, well, you turned out okay. So like, you know, that, I think that's where that comes from. She didn't know what she was doing. If you tell me the truth, you won't be in trouble. So it's like that right there, that statement shows that like they are not leaving that open line of communication to their children or Ruby's children, you know, or children overall that like, it's like saying that you can't talk to your children, you know, like be honest with me. Like that's why, I don't know, they're just messed up. Um, you can't expect kids to be perfect. So they think kids should be perfect. What? Don't be too harsh. They are only kids once. See, this is why I'm reading this because this, this is why they are. Okay. As long as he's trying, that's all you can ask for. That is true. Children, if they're trying, that's what you want. You know, just like with adults, if they're trying it matters, you know, like we all can't, we're not perfect. Ruby and Jody are far from perfect, you know? So the furthest in history, <laughs> no, I shouldn't say history, but you know what I mean? They're quite awful. Uh, kids need space. Give them their privacy. I agree to an extent. You should definitely give your children privacy. Like, I mean, I believe like all the time, but like there, obviously there's like stipulations when they're teenager age, you have children, you're like a significant other with them in the room. You know, th there's things obviously around that. Um, they will figure it out. Kids are supposed to make mistakes. We all make mistakes. <laughs> that's, that's not what it says, but that's what I believe. We all make mistakes. You know, none of us are perfect. Their brains aren't fully developed. They believe that is distorted. And I'm going to take a pause from reading all this to share with you some TikToks. Uh, it's all stuff that we already know, but I think it's really important to share is that um, I found uh, a really good person. I, I don't know. I think it's like Dr. Chelsea, hopefully I get that correct. I'll put it on the screen. Um, she shares about, she's really good. She's obviously a doctor and she works with children who are, are more, are more spirited children, you know, not that all children aren't, but some are more than others. And she has some really good insight to share about brain development and, you know, talking to your children. So I'll roll that for you right now. This is a metaphor for the brain that will help you understand emotional regulation and what happens for your child when they are upset. Okay, so if this is a, the brain, 
you've got three parts that matter. So take your thumb, put it in your finger, fold your fingers over. This is the prefrontal cortex. That is the last part of the brain to develop. Brain develops back to front. It is also where language is processed. It is where rational thought lives. It is where children learn. And here's the rub. This part of the brain is the first part to kind of go offline when a child becomes dysregulated or frustrated. So when that happens, they do this thing called flipping their lid. So if they flip their lid, right? So now they're not using the part of the brain where rational thought, language, thinking, learning occurs. They flip their lid and then they're operating from this part of their brain. So the thumb is the limbic system. That's kind of like the seat of the emotions. And the your wrist is the base of your brain. And the base of the brain controls automatic functions. And so what happens for children is that they become frustrated, they become angry, they become hurt or scared, and they flip their lid. Some people call this an amygdala hijack. And then you're operating from down here. So when you're operating from the amygdala and the base of the brain, you're likely to have big and explosive emotions. Parents have a tendency then to talk to kids. Now what happens is that language, remember, lives up here in the prefrontal cortex. And so when your child has a flipped lid and you talk to them, it's not going to get in there. In these moments, I want to go for using my own calm and my presence and my quiet and my touch if my child likes it to help my child get their brain back online. So in the moment of really big upset, big feelings, big emotions, sometimes a flip load is hitting, kicking, yelling, screaming, throwing, grabbing or shut down, right? Hiding, running, refusing to talk. Right During those kinds of moments, my only goal is to get my child's lid back down. Once the lid is down, then I can move to whatever I wanted them to do, like cleaning up or doing their homework or telling me what happened or whatever it is. But until you get your child's prefrontal cortex back online, they're going to really struggle to process language or to do any of the learning, whether that's like school learning or like learning to keep your hands on your own body or whatever it is you're trying to teach. So if your child flips their lid, help them get their lid back down and then go for learning and cooperation. Okay. And then the next thing I wanted to roll because she mentions the prefrontal cortex and most of us have heard that your prefrontal cortex is not developed like fully developed until the age of 25. Well, I found a girl who's a neuroscientist. I believe that's what she is. Um, on TikTok as well. And she shares some really good details on like how that affects our thinking and not just going to the age of 25, but like uh, <laughs> the reason why I'm not explaining to you is because again, that's not my area of expertise and I'll let the professional explain it to you. So I'll roll that now too. Your prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed until your mid twenties, but what does that actually mean? Does it mean bigger, more brain cells? What are we talking about here? You're asking the right girl, cause I'm Rachel and I am a neuroscientist. The vast majority of brain cells that you'll ever have in your life, you already have when you're born. So it's not that. To understand what it means for the prefrontal cortex to be matured, let's look at brain development a little bit. So you're born, you have most of the brain cells that you'll ever have, and then you go through a period of time where you're making tons of connections between those brain cells. That's important because brain cells don't really do very much all by themselves. They're complicated little machines that are pretty useless all by themselves. Then we go through critical stages in childhood and adolescence where we undergo synaptic pruning. Basically, your brain takes a good hard look at which connections are super important and which we're not really using very much. Those connections that we're not really using very much get thrown in the trash or pruned away. And the ones we really need get strengthened up so they can be more efficient. It's this process of synaptic pruning that doesn't really fully do its thing until our mid twenties in the prefrontal cortex. Now that's important because the prefrontal cortex is responsible for some very precise higher order cognitive functions like making decisions, planning, impulse control, empathy, moral judgments. And so having that part of the brain not develop until later into adulthood gives us the flexibility to figure out which decisions, judgments, etc., are appropriate for our culture and context. So Ruby and Jody, you guys, in my opinion, my opinion, this is all just my opinion, 
are ridiculous. Their brains scientifically are not developed yet. Okay. These are still adolescent children. They're like, some of them didn't even hit puberty yet. You know, I feel like if this was the stuff in connections, when people like Paige and Johnny Hanna were involved, you know, Becky Berry, all these people, that should have been the alarm bells enough if this was the same copy that they had, because this is clearly just a bunch of printout worksheets, you know, then that should have been the thing to get running because scientific proof is that their brains are not developed yet. That would have send me running. I'd be like, what? If you think that that's distorted, then who are you? And I would be like, see ya, you know? So Again, it's important to do a vetting and really look at details. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know I always talk about looking at the details, the details matter, the things that maybe like the mass majority won't notice, the details matter, okay? Okay, let's continue <laughs> this. Now that we know that the brain is not, if anyone didn't know that, not fully developed, uh, that this is BS. <laughs> okay, that's his, he doesn't have to share. Now, I've seen a lot of research on TikTok and TikTok is a great resource, you know, there's actual professionals on there, is that we do have to te teach our children to share, but there are things that are theirs if we bought for them so we can teach them the right way to share. I'm not the one to tell you that. Find it online if you want to learn the tips and tricks of that. Um, I'm not a perfect parent. So there it is. They think that is a distorted reality or statement um, that uh, they're not a perfect parent. So they believe that children, that they should know everything, you know, that their brain is fully developed and that parents are perfect. Basically, um, children are to be seen, not heard. We've all heard that statement again, throwing in a truth in there to make it seem like this is all great. My kids are my whole world. My kids are my whole world. What's wrong with that? Um, maybe they mean like not having hobbies outside of that, but your children can still be your whole world. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Again, throwing in some stupid statement, just let them live a little. I'm the mom. I'm the martyr. I have four kids, five if you count my husband. <laughs> I laughed when I read that because that's obviously a thing with people. I do it because I want my kids happy. If you just love them, everything will work out. I don't have a life. I have kids. I'm going to let my child decide when she dates. I want my kids to have it better than I did. What is wrong with that? Seriously, guys. Um, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. <laughs> when I read this to my husband last night, because when the kids went to bed is when I decided to like see if I could find what um, Paige was talking about. <laughs> um, that statement, he's like, it sounds like a Southern statement. Like we're in Canada. So I'm, I'm we're just, it just sounds like that, you know? And um, Jody's from Arizona and Ruby's from, I believe from Utah. So like, I know they lived there and everything, but I believe they're from there. So they're not Southern, but <laughs> why throw in that Southern sounding statement? I'm happy when my kids are happy. That's true for me. I'm happy when my kids are happy. I do everything for them and they don't appreciate me. It's my fault. If I would have been more dot, dot, dot. If they, if they're going to drink, they should do it first at home. That is something I believe. I don't think underage drinking is appropriate. But I do when my kids, if they want to have that, when they're older adults, you know, in Canada, the drinking age is 18. I want them to experience that at home in a safe environment. What is wrong with that? I mean, I guess because Mormons, are they against drinking? I, I believe I would, I would assume so. Um, I know Christians are, I was raised Christian. Um, I don't want to impose my beliefs on my child. I'm that way. I was raised Christian. I'm honestly not sure what I believe now, but I would never want to push my beliefs on my children. I want them to you know, learn about everything and decide what they want to believe, you know, as long as it's not like evil, crazy things. <laughs> um, you made me feel bad. Strict parents make sneaky kids. That's actually true. That's actually true. Strict parents. make. How many people have you heard that were like never allowed to do anything and then went crazy once they moved out from home? That is very, very, very true. Okay. So they have all the truthful statements. I'm not going to read the truthful statements because they are seriously, absolutely ridiculous. Like, okay, I will read this is this. It gives me like Michael Scott, the office type of vibes. It says, um, fasten your seatbelt and hold, firm, hold firmly to your principles. Neil, Neil A. Maxwell. This one. Uh, what's another one? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Liberty lost. Liberty once lost is lost forever. Like they're just in like John Adams. They're just, I don't know who that is. Sorry. But they're just like throwing in like buzz random things. You know, that's why I 
it's not worth your time. I know I took up a lot of time reading the distorted ones, but I felt like that was really important to share based on all the evidence that has come out. So I wanted to read. So they have these distorted. They go into ones that they want to highlight in particular from that list of the distorted parenting statements. Okay. So the boys will be boys one they wanted to highlight. And it says this statement suggests aggressive, delinquent, disconnected behavior is inherent in um, sex. (laughs) I wasn't sure I could say it. The selfish choice is not responsible. This statement is dishonest as boys are capable of choosing emphatically. This statement lacks humility as it suggests expecting boys to learn from their behaviors is unreasonable. Obviously, there's some truth to that, but it's still kind of BS. Okay. They will grow out of it. This statement spreads the lie that distorted behaviors change with time and age. The truth is the pattern for change requires choice. Anytime distorted choices are given time and space, the distorted thoughts and behaviors canker, swell, morph, deepen. Time and space affords the child opportunity to refine his manipulation and hiding. So remember, they put EF and RF away from the other children. So they believe time and space will give the child opportunity to refine their manipulation because they brainwash the children to believe that they were uh, manipulating. A change requires humility to choose thoughts, behaviors that reflect the truth. For any child to abandon their destructive behaviors, engaging truthful choice is required. Uh, the next one, children aren't capable of lying. This statement supports the lie that children do not have choice. Children do choose to lie and children do choose to be honest. Children are inbred with a consciousness to know the difference between right and wrong. That is not true. Maybe like in a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, but it's actually learned and taught from your parents is my understanding. You know, that's my belief. You don't have to believe it, but that's what I believe. Um, Children are to be taught to be responsible for their thoughts. Okay, so they say that children should be taught. Uh, So why do they say children are supposed to be taught? Oh, they're taught to be responsible for their thoughts, feelings, words, and actions, which is a little bit of truth, but then they say that they're inbred to know the difference. Okay, last one is strict parents make sneaky parents. This statement supports the lie that parents can control the behaviors of the children. Uh, This distorted statement also supports the lie that high moral expectations of children are the cause of their sneaky, deceptive, rebellious choices. This statement gives children a hiding place for their irresponsible choices and holds the parents hostage to the child's demands. This This belief is damaging to a child as it sets him or her up to believe that they can get what they want Okay, what they demand, blame others for their deceptions, become instantly gratified, and never have adverse outcomes. Okay, so that is absolutely insane. Um, Like I've already shared, this is written by Ruby and Jody. Okay, I got it from Amazon. Unfortunately, I had to support them with my dollar, but I took one for the team, you know, share (laughs) share a little bit. This is not just like Googling what distorted, whatever. This is their legit teaching principles. So gain some insight into what all these connections coaches have were learning. If this was the exact same like copy, you know, that um, the they were using at the same time, I guess I should <laughs> check when this book was printed. Let's see. I know it was self-published by the way. Okay, if I can put it on the screen, I'm gonna look on Amazon when this book was published because I actually don't have a publishing date on here. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look and I'll put it up on the screen. But it is the most recent. I've not heard anyone talk about the book that they wrote together. This is obviously just the worksheets from their connections, uh, classroom, connections classroom, you know? Uh, so yeah, anyone still involved in connections? Crazy. Leave, 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 leave. Run as far as you can. Okay, so now we're going to get into the rest of Paige's video. So I'm just going to refer to them as pain and peace. But I want you to understand that's where the initial, um, they're in distortion, they're in distortion came from. Because to accuse a child of being in distortion, well, then you should be able to have the compassion and empathy to recognize, well, they're in a state of pain. Exactly. And instead of saying, well, they're not in truth, they're not in truth, then it's, oh, well, they're not in peace. And how can I as a parent, help them to get into a state of peace. Exactly. I can recognize that they're in pain. And so I took to that pain and peace teaching very quickly because I thought, what a gift. What a gift. If I can recognize my child's hurting, then I can see they're in pain and I can help them through through compassion and, and kindness and charity, help them come over into a place of peace. Um, that's why the parents were there. That, that was the parenting class. Another teaching was um, 
adulation, and denigration. A state of feeling better than or a state of feeling less than. And if you are feeling like you're better than other people, then somewhere deep inside, you must have fear that you're not enough. And if you feel less. So this is true. It is in the book. Not worth it to go through right now. Uh, But we all know if you've been following this uh, case that Jody has a book called I Am Not Not Enough. (laughs) So this is, and the book is super repetitive. I wouldn't say buy it, honestly. I wish there's a way I could just like put it on like a dock or something and share it with you guys. But unfortunately, I can't. I believe there's some sort of like law probably around that. So I wonder, like I shared when I was reading Jody and Ruby's book, how much of the book or the teachings have changed since Paige left? Is it the same stuff? Because through reading that, it's like that should have had alarm bells for someone like Paige, you know, because I've shared in previous videos that I believe that they're very smart and not easily pushed around by Jody, obviously, which is why they were able to leave successfully, you know? Uh, it, it slowed down behavior enough so you could recognize the thought before the action. And, and that was a, that was a good space. It was a good, um, thing I needed, you know, as a, as a younger mom with six little kids, I, my oldest at the time, I think was, um, eight. So six kids under eight, I just wanted to be more in peace as we all do. (laughs) So pain and peace was the gauge. And, and then everything else, all of these principles of truth were these supplements to help you recognize when you've moved Sorry, that was my uh, door. <laughs> from peace over into pain. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember what, you know, drama was one of them, like I mentioned. Um, Sometimes I like sprint and just, you know, dive right into that, that drama pit but when i'm skirting the edge i can tell that i i'm doing a really poor job of holding it so i need to give myself a boundary and that is i bet i can do this for five more minutes and then i got it and then i'm out That's and a great visual. when when you're sitting around the table at thanksgiving just picture that hole and see where you are in it because of that teaching i i started recognizing the behaviors of my children and I could see when they were hurting. And I- but again, I, I can't remember what she's going to say next, but it is normal behaviors of children. You know, like the things I read about the disorder uh, statements uh, and realities, a lot of these things are normal. Yes, sometimes children need therapy and help further, but I think a lot of parents uh, don't know how to self-regulate their emotions. I'm not saying Paige is one of them. I'm just saying like a blanket statement is a lot of parents don't know how to self-regulate themselves. And because of that, they can't deal with their children's emotions. So like I've learned as a parent, you know, coming from a parent who didn't parent well, is that uh, I need to, like, if I am heightened, I just need to walk away and realize I can't control my child. My children are, you know, little humans who can't self-regulate. So I give myself a second to step away if I feel triggered by it. And then I come back and I can responsibly and calmly help my children through their emotions, which is a healthy thing to do. So (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's my two cents. Um, and then how this, how this manifested in marriage was, you know, I started recognizing when I was off and Johnny started recognizing when he was off and then we would communicate and, and have these conversations of recognizing, oh, well, it was when I, this is what I misunderstood. And when I thought that this is where I went and then, okay, this is what I heard. And this is why I went there. And, and so overall, it just increased the ability to communicate within my household and I was grateful for it. Hi, I'm Paige, and I'm here to tell you why you need to join me at the Connections Women's Retreat in St. George this January. Before I found Connections, I would describe myself as socially anxious, somewhat depressed, and an introvert. I really labeled myself as those things because it seemed fitting. I didn't like going out. I didn't like going and talking with others. I got overwhelmed with my role as a mother and with my marriage, and I just didn't know where to go. This is what things looked like pre-connections. You come home from work, but you don't come home from work because you're still answering emails. And then the time I do have with you, we're in bed and you're like, oh, hey, it's good to see you. I'm going to be on my phone in bed. And then you wake up and you're like, oh, hey, where's my best friend? Oh, my phone's right here. And then you're on your phone all day, all the time. You don't even care about any of us. You only care about that. 
it felt like this state of confusion where I could tell something was off or I could tell I wasn't feeling right and I didn't know where to go with it. This is what it looks like post connections. Same circumstance, same place, different vocabulary, different tools, different principles. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that when you're on your phone, it hits my fear that my needs don't matter. And that's why I've been so upset and so aggressive about you being on your phone. And I'm not going to do that anymore. I know that you being on your phone doesn't affect my needs mattering. And I'm just going to let you know if you're on it, I'm going to go make sure that I'm taking care of me and not focusing on you. And you may or may not feel the distance between us, but it is going to be there because you're choosing a connection with your phone over choosing connection with me. Since then, and being a part of the connections program, I have picked up tools and principles that have helped me along the way to really gain a sense of self. What I learned is that peace can happen within me. All I needed was the tools to get me going. Everyone needs to start somewhere. Start with me in St. George this January where you can learn the same principle. So that's, that's 2017. That's 2018. Uh, I'm here in 2024 having completely, uh, separated myself from any of those teachings from anything. It doesn't take somebody with a low IQ to be manipulated by, mm, let's just say a cult leader. It, it just takes the desire to become a better person and somebody to kind of manipulate it. So whether you, yes. So this is exactly the exact same thing. I'm keeping the connection to MLMs is that most people who start or join an MLM is because they want to do a business and they like can't go, they either don't have the finances to go the traditional route of having a business or they don't even know what kind of business they would even do. So an MLM comes into their life and they're like, oh yeah, I'd like to be my own business owner. But you know, if you're an MLM or have experience with that, you know that that's not a business. Okay. That's not a business. You are just selling product, you know, you're a salesperson. Um, and so it's the same thing is that like people like Paige were found in their vulnerable spot and they of course wanted to become better. So, so why not? This sounds great. And I can totally see that, you know, yeah, I'm not like giving them a pass or something. I'm just like, this is literally just my honest thoughts. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, my objective in sharing this isn't to be the type of individual teach their own, but to bash somebody just for the sake of bashing them. You know, like I like to be as factual as possible and I will say something's my opinion when it's my opinion. Just want the approval of a, a boss or a pastor or a friend that you think is better than you or you perceive as on a pedestal. You are in danger of dropping your own character and integrity to appease that other person. I have some tools that will help my family and, oh, look, it is helping my family. So I think it could help your family too. MLM. And because multiple people were having this experience, then multiple people were bringing others into the same teachings. Here is a parenting class. Here is a, uh, I think she called it a one-on-one class which was just basic therapy principles to help you with whatever you're going through. There were college students in it. There were um, older couples. There were... I wanted to um, invite those of you who have not signed up for the monthly membership. The monthly membership is amazing. It really is. Every Saturday I get on live with um, uh, you, the students from all over the world, and we talk about a topic. And this coming June, starting next Saturday, which will be in, what, five days, uh, we're going to be talking about um, forgiveness and humility. And so here's all the things you get for $20. Um, you will have live training with me on this unique topic every month. Like I said, Sunday, or Monday, or excuse me, Saturday, we're going to be talking about forgiveness and humility. And then you'll have access to all the digital books. I believe there's about 15 digital workbooks that you'll have access to. Uh, you'll have 30 additional videos of live training events that you can have access to that have been recorded and they're on the site for you to watch. Um, and I talk all about truth and distortion and optional and inevitable pain and drama and vulnerability and validation and on and on and on. There is a community forum to interact with um, on connections with 
trainers and members of, of the class which is on a group me forum. And so you'll have access to them as well. There's also 18 videos. So in addition to these 30 additional videos, there's 18 inside those 30 that are specifically about the class, like um, information about the class. So information about forgiveness and humility. You had, you had an array of people who were just seeking help. Over time, I recognize that Jody purposely put herself on a pedestal, not just so you would see her as a God, but because she believed she was a God. Um, and she goes by Gelo, remember in Ruby's journal, that's, I believe Gelo is almost like JLo, you know, like um, having that persona, but then because she sees herself as God, it's like Gelo, you know what I mean? Um, that's just, that's my thoughts. And Comment if you want me to share the full music video of Jody. It will be copyrighted. I won't make a dime off of that because she plays copyrighted music, obviously. Uh, but I, I do want it, it to, it'll, it'll be really quick to put up anyways, but I'm thinking about putting that up. So <laughs> let me know if you guys want to see its entirety. I did do an edited version, but yeah, I might, I think I'm going to put it on YouTube. I, I know it's evident how narcissistic she is, but, but truly, um, to the nth degree narcissistic mm -hmm. and yep. uh, was masterful with the manipulation, was masterful with um, carefully laying the steps for you to desire what she was teaching and then to desire to please her. Um, Johnny and I never saw Jody as a therapist. We and I'll address that in the emails sent and the other stuff that I found that proves actually what she's saying, actually <laughs> what she is saying is correct. I don't think in my video I said that she got therapy. Actually, maybe I did because the KSL article did say that, but I'll get into that at the end of uh, her video here. I, we took, I took the parenting class, thought it was great. He took the parenting class, thought it was great. And then he and I were asked to serve on the board of her company. Um, Johnny had experience with uh, creating different businesses and, and we thought what a great way to help uh, the mental health of others um, by supporting this business. We were not paid. We, it was all volunteer. And over time we, uh, we saw the best solution to, to teaching these uh, helpful tools was to find coaches who were already within the program, already understood it, already benefited from it, to then become coaches and go out and teach. Um, the benefit of that was that Jody, through time, had started becoming more harsh. And uh, instead of, like, like I had explained, she said the benefit, COVID, that's weird. If they're in a state of distortion, then they must be in pain. Like, how can I help you? You're in pain. It was like, well, you're obviously in distortion. It was gross. There was a gigantic lack of compassion, and that was just known by everybody. Nobody questioned it. It was hard to question this person who taught you everything. Um, but everybody just knew, like, well, when I do phone calls with people and help them or, or talk to them as friends, um, I am compassionate. I can just say, like, oh, I'm sorry, you're in pain. Um, what do you think happened? Can you ever see Jody saying sorry? God, no, no way. And, uh, <laughs> we thought if we could help this business to have these coaches, then we could get Jody out of the way. And these coaches would very much be able to uh, show compassion, show understanding. Uh, but then did they not realize that this is Jody's and that because she said she was a narcissist, they realized all those things they should know that that would probably be impossible unless they're talking about like their impact in their community, you know, with homie and just like all that sort of stuff. The, what's it called? The network that they've already built in their community. Maybe they're referring to that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's it. Unfortunately, the majority of the people who had worldwide, who've had introduction to connections, had it through Ruby and Ruby never utilized it the way it was originally learned. So you, automatically assume that everybody who ever learned it and, and hates their spouse and where there probably are people who and have hated their spouse. Um, 
it had good seeds. And anything that has good seeds has the ability to lead you away if you make it your God. Fortunately, I had enough of a relationship with my own higher power that as um, Jody grew in her control and in her um, desire to to bring pain to people, um, uh, enough people were like, something's off. I think she ends it now. I basically. think that's where I want to leave it. Yeah. Okay. She just she's gonna outro her video now, and that's not. It's like I don't know how long. It's just like a little bit of her. Yeah. The next like one and a half minutes basically is her outroing the video. So yeah, so that's my thoughts on it. I do think it's good that she spoke. I think it's a little bit late to speak and she only did it because of the hundreds of thousands of views that the interview with Kevin had had and everyone's like, who are they? Who are they? Who are they? You know, I think this is going to give a lot more attention to them. And I don't, I don't know if it was the right move. Like, of course, it's good to speak out, right? It's very good. But would it have been better if they did it from the very beginning? Let me know what you guys think. I think... I think it would have been better to distance themselves before at the very beginning, because then when their names got mentioned in the interview, people would be like, oh, they weren't even around when you moved out, you know, whatever, whatever it was, unless no. Anyways, okay, so now we're going to get into the emails that I sent with Paige. They're just pretty basic, but um, yeah, let's get into that. Okay, sorry about, I, re I was <laughs> fixing my hair and I noticed that my hair had fallen. So sorry if that was distracting. I know for me when I watch people and I see something like that, it's distracting. So sorry if it was. Okay, let's get into the emails. I, I will only, by the way, I only knew about this video because a subscriber, I assume a subscriber, it might not be a subscriber, it might just be a viewer, uh, commented on my community post, letting me know that this video had dropped. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I immediately went to watch it. Um, so yeah, okay. I should say, I never told her I wasn't going to share them. And I never told her I was going to share them. So just so you're aware of that. I'm not being like sneaky or whatever. I have never said any of my videos that if you contact me, I won't share anything. I've never said that. So just kind of covering myself here. Okay, let's get into it. Um, good evening, Paige. I just finished watching your almost 23 minute video on YouTube and it definitely clears up suspicion of both you and Johnny. I have a couple of questions if you're willing to answer them. Uh, are, th are the things that Kevin Frankie stated in his police interview correct in that Jody Hildebrandt lived with you and your family in Mapleton? You said neither of you received therapy from Jody Hildebrandt. However, I did find an article which Johnny said that the team at Homie did. Are you saying this is in fact not true? I'm not trying to be assumptive, but are you suggesting that Ruby Frankie was the mastermind behind the shift in connections and not Jody? Because now watching it a second time, it doesn't come across that way. But when I first watched it, I thought she was kind of like blaming Ruby. I mean, I guess maybe it still comes across that way. And then I said, thank you for your time. If you read this email, I wish you all the best and look forward to you sharing more on your channel because I did subscribe to her channel. Okay. Uh, and then she said back to me, I was shocked when I saw that pop up. I was like, what? She actually emailed me back. She said, hi, Jessica. I watched the video you put out six months ago on us and was really impressed with your ability to give information in a neutral manner. Uh, because I did, I tried to remain factual. Obviously I did the best that I had and I didn't like slander, I slander them. Um, and I did have comments, people suggesting that I slandered them, but clearly Paige did not think so. Uh, she said, while much of your information was inaccurate, I appreciate the effort you put in to try to piece it together. And she answered my first question. She said, yes, Jody did stay in her home for a six week period. I didn't ask specifics about the um, hitting on Johnny or anything like that, because I, I don't know, I just didn't. Second question she answered, she said, it is in fact not true. My husband got tired of explaining this therapist I work with on her board as a business consultant and took a parenting class from dot, 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 and started saying she was our therapist. I would get upset with him every time I saw it referenced that she was our therapist. She wasn't. And I'm going to get into the article in a second. Uh, and that she answered the third question as well. She said, no, in no way did I think Ruby was a mastermind. She is 100% a follower. Jody was responsible for the shift. I hope this provides a little more clarity, which I thought was a great email. She was very respectful, very kind. She didn't have to be because I did a video on her, you know, um, and I appreciate that. And then I said back to her, <laughs> I was like, okay, she emailed me. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try to get more clarity. Uh, I said, hello, Paige. I really appreciate you emailing me back. I was wondering if you had possibly seen my video, but didn't really think so as my channel is so tiny. So I, I thought maybe they did, but at the same time, I was like, how would they? Because my channel is so small, you know? Um, I said, I went back to read the article by KSL. It's KSL News in Utah. So I could see what you meant. And I'm still confused because even if she wasn't your relationship therapist, why does the article say, after seeing the program work wonders with his marriage and personal life, he also considered how the program could help ease conflict and communication within his business and worked with connections to roll out the program to his employees? 
It is worded in such a way that it says it was rolled out to employees. I also went back to watch my video to see what you may have thought was wrong in the video since you said much of it was inaccurate. I really did the best with what I had and I did try to not assume but go off of what I could find online. I'm sure I got specific family details wrong as there's not really they're not really easily found. I really do try to present facts as much as possible and then share my opinion and say it's just my opinion. If you're willing, could you please let me know what you think I got wrong because I would like to correct that. I've corrected information from other cases willingly because like I said, I really do want to share facts when possible to prove. And then I said, I don't think it's a bad thing to say what your full involvement and connections was before it turned sinister. It actually helps the public to understand the entire picture versus, versus assuming everyone in connections because that is obviously not true. I think the unfortunate thing is all the members and ex-members have been so silent, so it's just left people to assume guilt and all those involved. But I also get that you'll probably share more on your channel, which is good. I know my email is asking a lot, so I fully understand if I never get another reply back, I'm just seeking more clarity. Take care, Jessica. And she did respond back, which again, freaking shocked me. Uh, she said, I see what you're saying. Thanks for including the quote so I could understand the question. Connections as a program was what he was referring to. And the things we learned worked wonders in our marriage and personal life. Johnny and I have always had a good marriage and the tools we learned in communication helped it even better to get even better. I must have been thinking about another video posted that quoted Johnny saying she was our therapist and assumed that was you. Sorry for the misunderstanding. I'll provide a timeline so you can understand where the information was skewed. We discontinued all communication with Jody in May of 2021. Johnny left his job in September of 2022 which I didn't know about the May 2021, but I did share about the leaving his job in my video of September 2022. His leaving his job was in no way a result of Jody. So maybe that's what she says I got wrong because I I was, I was, didn't say that was factual. I said, it's my opinion, did she? Like I left it as a question. So from Paige herself, she said, Johnny did not leave homie because of Jody, which is good to know. I can explain why he left as I understood there was some confusion when the housing market was thought to be doing well. When prices for homes increased during the pandemic and people had more equity in their home, they weren't interested in using a discount brokerage, which Homie is. Then as interest rates started climbing, the housing market rapidly slowed down. Both were hit to Homie and resulting in the layoff of many employees and then himself. So I did share that in the video as well about Johnny laying himself off, but I don't know if I shared in that video, but I did look after and I saw that Johnny still sits on the board of Homie. So he is like fired, you know, from being a traditional regular employee in the business, uh, like selling houses and stuff, but he still sits on the board. So, you know, still part of decision-making, etc. cetera. Uh, she goes on to say he was unemployed for eight months, spending time with us as a family before returning to work at a new company in July of 23, which I shared in my video as well, which company I found that he works at. Again, <laughs> I decided to try again, email her further because she is being really nice and respectful. I too am being nice and respectful to her. Again, just wanting to correct some things and get some more clarity on the situation. Um, so I said back to her, well, I did say you must have received therapy from Jody, as the article does say that. So no need to apologize to me. Also in the connections videos of both of you, you do share how you already had a good marriage, but want to make things better. You're extremely respectful in the way that you respond to these emails. And it goes exactly with my assumptions of both you and Johnny. I did say in my video, you both present yourselves as confident people who can't be easily pushed around. Thanks for the details. I did share that in my video about the timeline of Johnny leaving homie and started at funnel leasing. I did see after posting that he, he does it on the board of homie, which I just shared with you guys, uh, still just not as a regular employee anymore, but I don't know if that's true today. Again, feel free to not answer any more questions, but do you know how Julie DeRue, Ruby Frankie's sister would have become an affiliate with homie in July of 2023? Or would Johnny have nothing to do with that? Because I assume that must have come from the social media department. Thanks again, Jessica. And the final correspondence from Paige, I did not email her back. There was obviously no need to. Uh, she said, I forgot to mention that I don't expect you to correct any details at all. There is no harm in your video. And I was appreciative of the compliment that we appeared confident and not easily pushed around. So the haters who came for me in that video, it sounds, if she's telling the truth, that Paige didn't hate my video. Okay. The Frankies had used Homie as a realtor because of our friendship. They had a good experience and saved a lot of money on realtor commissions. The Derus wanted the same experience and worked with marketing as affiliates. There we go. We have the answer on how they became affiliates with Homie. They saw Ruby and Kevin save money. So they want to save money as well. So I don't know if they knew, obviously they knew about connections, but they didn't know like, like how Paige has shared that the severity of connections went down just before they left. Um, and then, so then my assumption from that would be that Julie DeRue had no idea about the severity of connections either. So I'm not saying you come to your own opinion. Okay. This is just my opinion. It's my channel. I'm just sharing my opinion, but that's just what I think based on the people who are involved, like who are, their names are on it. Right. So 
that's it right there. So let's continue on with a little bit more of this video. Okay, sorry if you hear my kids now. My husband took them for a nice long walk and then to get some lunch <laughs> so that I can film this video. So that is basically all I have for my information about Paige and uh, the book with Ruby and Jody. Uh, I found out, you know that if you watch my video about Jody, you know, searching for RF, you know, and I did, I don't, I did share the document in my community post. Um, and then I shared the video showing, um, we all would have saw that on all the channels, but of Jody talking to the lawyer on the phone, I found that lawyer. I have videos of him. I found it. That is going to be my, one of my next videos about Jody, um, in the next like week or so. I'm still waiting on the call log information from uh, St. George of any potential phone calls that would have happened at like on, on Jody, like as in people calling on her. I do have two calls that were made from Jody's house, not like the actual 911 call, but the call log for it. Um, I, I, I want to request the 911 call for that. Uh, but, and I have the exact time and everything. So I will do that. I have the dispatch for it, but I need to request the actual 911 call for it. Cause you have to get the call log first because you can't request a 911 call for something you don't know. So I'm still requesting the 911 call. I'm going to do that. Okay. I'm just in between a lot of records requests right now and it is time consuming. I know some people don't understand how time consuming it is, but it, it actually is a lot of work to get records requests in. Um, and then I, like I shared already, I was planning on doing the one about the Oklahoma daycare. And I still am this one just you know, when new, new news happens, you, uh, for a case you've covered, you really got to jump on it. So let's end this video with a video of, <laughs> of Jody. I'm going to have to like take out the music or whatever, but Jody, Jody wanted to clearly be a vlogger. We know that they were going to give their channel eight passengers over to Jody. And then she clearly wanted to be a vlogger herself. You know, it didn't pan out. I just got a massage. That's why my hair is all disheveled. It was all nice and <laughs> and combed, and now it's all greasy. <laughs> and I had an amazing massage from my masseuse. He is so strong, and he just gets in there and just works out my muscles, and it just feels so horrible. <laughs> it's painful. But afterwards, I feel so much better. <laughs> so it's probably how you feel when you work with me. It's in the moment it hurts and then you're like, oh, I feel so much better. I have peace now.